Angle of Elevation and Depression. This is video 8.4a. We've got eight previous videos for Chapter 8 linked in the description in the Geometry Playlist. An angle of elevation is the angle formed by a horizontal line and a line of sight to a point above the line. So the angle of elevation goes from the tower to the airplane. That's the angle of elevation. It's going up to look above at the airplane. And the angle of depression is an angle formed by a horizontal line and a line of sight to a point below the line. So for the pilot to look at the tower, that would be the angle of depression. So that would be angle 2, that would be angle 1, and angle 2 goes from the plane to the tower, so we can see we have two horizontal lines that are parallel, so that line of sight is a transversal, isn't it? And angle 2 is going to be congruent to angle 1 because they're alternate interior angles. Looking at this, we can see that from the line of sight from the plane to the ground would be the transversal. We have a horizontal line and a horizontal line, and that's cutting through them. So angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent to each other. That's the angle of depression. That's the angle of elevation. Okay. So since horizontal lines are parallel, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 by the alternate interior angles theorem. This means the angle of elevation from one point is congruent to the angle of depression from another point. And we can classify angles of elevation and depression. Angle 3, right here by the bird, is formed by a horizontal line and a line of sight to a point below the line to the woman. That's an angle of depression. Angle 4, right here from her eyes to the bird, is formed by a horizontal line right here and her line of sight to a point above the line to the bird. So that's an angle of elevation, angle 4 right here above the horizontal line. Angle 5 is formed by the horizontal line and a line of sight to a point below the line. So for her to look down here at this ladybug, that would be angle 5, that would be an angle of depression. And angle 6, for the ladybug to for the ladybug to look up at the woman is formed by a horizontal line and a line of sight to a point above the line, and that's an angle of elevation. So it's the bug looking up at her, okay? And we can find a distance by using angle of elevation. An air traffic controller sights an airplane at an angle of elevation of 41 degrees. And the pilot reports that the plane's altitude is 4,000 feet. So what is the horizontal distance between the plane and the airport rounded to the nearest foot? The first thing we do is draw a diagram to represent the given information. We're going to let A represent the airport. We're going to let P represent the airplane. And X is going to be the horizontal distance between the plane and the airport. Okay? Because for angle A, we have an opposite and we're trying to find X, we're going to do opposite over adjacent to angle A. So that's a tangent ratio, isn't it? And we know that A is 41 degrees, so we have the tangent of 41 degrees. The opposite is 4,000 over the adjacent X. We have the side opposite A and the adjacent side X, so we have a tangent ratio. We can multiply both sides by X, and this will cancel out as a 1. Then we can divide both sides by the tangent of 41 degrees. This cancels out as a 1. And we have x is equal to 4,000 divided by the tangent of 41 degrees. We divide and round to the nearest foot, and we get that x is approximately 4,601 feet. So we know the horizontal distance from this tow air, air traffic control tower to the plane is 4,601 feet, approximately. Okay. We can find distance by using angle of depression. A forest ranger in a 90-foot tower sees a fire. So his tower is 90 feet. We see the fire F over here. The angle of depression to the fire is 7 degrees. That's this little measure right here. So what's the horizontal distance between the tower and the fire rounded to the nearest foot? 
So we draw a diagram to represent the given information. Eight information. We're going to let T represent the top of the tower and F represent the fire. And X will be the horizontal distance between the tower and the fire. By the alternate interior angles theorem, the measure of angle F is equal to 7 degrees down here. So if this is 7 degrees and we have a parallel line and a parallel, you know, a set of parallel lines here, by the alternate interior angles theorem, if this is 7 degrees, then that's 7 degrees. So we know the angle of F is 7 degrees. We also have an opposite side over an adjacent side, X. So I'm going to do a tangent ratio, tangent of 7 degrees. It's going to equal 90 over X. We can multiply both sides by the X and cancel this set of X's out as a 1. Then we can divide both sides by the tangent of 7 degrees. This cancels out as a 1, and we do our division and get that x is approximately 733 feet. So we know the distance from the tower horizontally to the fire is about 733 feet. And beware that the angle of depression may not be one of the angles in the triangle we're solving. It may be the complement of one of the angles in the triangle. Or we might have to use the alternate interior angles theorem to know that that's 7 degrees like we did here, okay? So always make a diagram or sketch if one isn't given, and it'll help us correctly place the given angle measure or measures, right? We have another one. A pilot flying at an altitude of 2.7 kilometers sees two control towers directly in front of her. So she sees two control towers on the ground. The angle of depression to the base of one tower is 37 degrees, okay? The angle of depression to the base of the other tower is 58 degrees. So what's the distance between the two towers rounded to the nearest tenth of a kilometer? So the first thing we do is draw the diagram. We're going to let P represent the plane. We're going to let A and B represent the two towers, and X will be the distance between the two towers. We'll call this distance y, and the entire length x plus y will be z, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is find y. And by the alternate interior angles theorem, if this angle is 58 degrees, then this angle is 58 degrees if PA is a transversal of these parallel lines, okay? So measure of angle CAP is equal to 58 degrees. And in triangle APC, APC, this one right here, we have the tangent 58 degrees is equal to 2.7 over Y. So Y is equal to 2.7 over the tangent of 58 degrees. That's approximately 1.6871 kilometers when we're going to round this afterwards, okay? Because it said to round it to the nearest tenth, we're going to do that at the end. Okay? And in a minute, I'll show you why. Now we find z, this entire length. And by the alternate interior angles theorem, the measure of angle CP, CBP is 37 degrees. So CBP, this one right here, is 37 degrees. If PB is a transversal and that's 37 degrees, then that's 37 degrees, right? So we have the tangent of 37 degrees because we have an opposite over an adjacent, 2.7 over z, okay? So it's going to be this entire triangle here. We have 2.7 over z. So z is equal to 2.7 over the tangent of 37 degrees. We do the division, and we get approximately 3.5830 kilometers, and we're going to round that one afterwards also. So we have this amount and this amount. So now we need to find x, and x is equal to z minus y. This x is equal to this entire length z minus the y. And we do the 3.5830 minus the 1.6871, okay, these two amounts, and we get that it's approximately 1.9 kilometers. So the two towers are about 1.9 kilometers apart from each other, all right? See how we did that? So a horizontal line can be used to form an angle of elevation or an angle of depression from any point. 
She's looking at this statue. Up to the top of the statue would be her angle of elevation, and looking at the base of the statue would be the angle of depression, okay? And angles of depression can be used to find the distance between objects when we look down. We can even use the angle of elevation, can't we? And the root word for elevation is elevate, which means to raise. And the root word for depression is depress, which means down. So, looking at this diagram, if, she's, if the bird is looking down, that's the angle of depression. If she's looking up at the bird from this horizontal line, this area here is the angle of elevation. Okay? Sorry about the focus. So an angle of elevation is made by a horizontal line and the line made by looking up, that line of sight. And the angle of depression is made by a horizontal line and that line made by looking down, that line of sight looking down. Okay? So here's how, there, here's the reason we round afterwards, okay? Most of the time, if you round it off first, it will probably work, but you can't guarantee it. So if we had 4.008, we could round that to 4.0, couldn't we? And if we wanted to subtract 1.251, well, we could round that to 1.3. When we do the actual subtraction, we get 2.757, and that rounds to the nearest tenth as 2.8. But if we do 4.0 minus 1.3, we're going to get a 2.7. So you're going to be a little more accurate if you do your rounding at the end, okay? That's why. Our next lesson is indirect measurement using trigonometry, 8.4b. All right? So if any of this was confusing, I would hope that you would just play the video again and see if you missed something or if it makes more sense the second time around. Because that happens a lot in a movie. When you see it the second time, you see little Easter eggs or things that you didn't realize were there the first time. Or try going back and watching the previous videos to catch up about what we were doing with tangent and cosine and sine. Okay? I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!